Hello students. Today we are going to discuss the most important and interesting part of electrodynamics that is the electromagnetic wave, existence of electromagnetic wave, electromagnetic waves in vacuum. So we have uh, already introduced the Maxwell's equations or Maxwell's equation, uh, Gauss's law, uh, del dot B is equal to zero, Faraday's law, Ampere's law with Maxwell's correction term, mu zero epsilon zero dou e by dot t. Now, if you look at the development of this equation, you can see the first equation is Gauss's law. It is derived from Coulomb's law and uh, superposition theorem. So, Coulomb's law was developed in 18, sorry, 1780s, and uh, the last law, Ampere's law. Ampere's developed his law in 1820s, then Faraday's law in 1830s. So, Maxwell. Uh, arranged all this in a beautiful way, uh, like what we see uh, here. Uh, the first form of Maxwell's equation came in 1860s. So now we call all these equations as Maxwell's equations, though the first equation is uh, a contribution from, mainly the contribution from Coulomb, then Ampere's, uh, then Faraday, but we call these equations are Maxwell's equations. So let us see what is the contribution of Maxwell uh, in, in these equations. So we see Maxwell's contribution is the, uh, mainly in this equation, Maxwell's contribution is only this last, last step, the Ampere's, uh, the correction to the Ampere's law, this correction term, mu zero epsilon zero dou e by dou t. So what is the importance of this term? So what is the importance of Maxwell's contribution uh, of this term? So that is what we want to see. So. We are considering vacuum, electromagnetic waves in vacuum. So vacuum means it is free from charge and current. So we can take, we can assume rho is equal to zero, charge density and current density are zero. So Maxwell's equation will take the form del, del dot E is equal to, if rho is equal to zero, Gauss's law become del dot E is equal to zero, equation one, then del dot B is always zero, then del cross V, del cross E equal to minus dou B by dou T, Faraday's law. Then del cross V is equal to mu zero Ampere's law, mu zero J. If J is equal to zero, first time is zero, we get mu zero epsilon zero dou E by dou T. So let me call this equation as equation one, two, three, and four. So in vacuum or in free space, Maxwell's equation, general form of Maxwell's equation can be reduced to this form. Now, these equations are uh, for coupled first order partial differential equation. Mm -hmm. So you can see it's a partial differential equation, divergence and scale means uh, derivative with respect to space and derivative with respect to time, only first order uh, derivatives are involved. So this is a first order coupled partial differential equations. So coupled means, uh, for example, if you consider del cross E is given by minus dou B by dou T. So what is B? B is defined by equation four. That is del cross B is mu zero epsilon zero dou E by dou T. But equation four in turn defined using electric field. So electric field is defined by three. So these are not independent equations, they are coupled equations. So they can be decoupled. Uh, by taking the curl of curl equations. If you take the curl of curl equation, curl equation means equation three and four. For example, take the curl of equation three. Taking the curl of equation three, we write del cross, del cross E is equal to, right hand side, we have minus del cross dou B by dou T. Now, using a vector identity, we can write del cross del cross E as grad of dive E minus Laplacian of E. Hmm? Grad dive E minus Laplacian of E, that is equal to, now I'm going to interchange the order of uh, differentiation with respect to space and time, hmm? because uh, curl means differentiation with respect to space and here we have differentiation with respect to time so we can change the order so this can be written as minus dou pi dou t of del cross b okay now using equation one 
and 3. So equation 1 means del dot E is equal to 0. So first term del dot E is equal to 0. This becomes 0 minus Laplacian E equal to minus dou by dot D of del cross B. Del cross B is given by equation 4 mu 0 epsilon 0 dou E by dot D. Okay. So this is mu 0 epsilon 0 dou E by dot D. So this can be written as minus minus cancels. This is del square E equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 are constants mu 0 epsilon 0 dou by dot u dou by dot u e is, is second derivative dou square e by dou d square dou d square so we decouple this equation so this equation is uh, entirely depends on electric field only so this is a second order differential equation laplacian of sorry laplacian of e del square e equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 dou square e by dou d square Similarly, you can write, you can obtain an equation for B also. For this, take the curl of last equation. So, del cross, del cross B is equal to mu 0, epsilon 0, dou by dou t of del cross E. Here also, I interchange the order of uh, derivative with respect to time and space. Now again using the vector identity del cross del cross b can be written as grad of dive of b minus Laplacian of b equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 dou by dou t of del cross e. Okay. Now again we have del dot b is equal to 0 according to equation 2, then replace del cross e with Faraday's law minus dou b by dou t. So del dot b is 0, first term is 0 minus Laplacian b equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 dou by dou t dou by dou t of del cross E is minus dou b by dou t according to Faraday's law dou b by dou t. So negative on both sides cancels. We can write del square b equal to mu 0 epsilon 0 dou by dou t of dou by dou t is second derivative dou square b by dou t square. Okay. So we got an equation for uh, magnetic field also. Now let this be equation 5 and equation 6. You can immediately identify equation 5 and 6 are the wave equations for electric and magnetic fields. So comparing with the three-dimensional wave equation, we have three-dimensional wave equation, general form of three-dimensional wave equation as del square some varying function f equal to 1 by v square dou square f by dou t square. So this is the general wave equation we already uh, studied. So comparing with general wave equation, you can see equation 5 and 6 are wave equations for electric and magnetic fields. Or electric and magnetic fields uh, can can be can propagate as a wave in vacuum. So vacuum supports the propagation of electric and magnetic fields or generally electromagnetic fields. Now you can also identify the velocity 1 by v square. So instead the at the place of this 1 by v square we have mu 0 epsilon 0. So 1 by v square is mu 0 epsilon 0 or you can identify v You can calculate V, velocity of propagation of these electric and magnetic fields. P is equal to 1 by square root of mu 0 epsilon 0. Okay. So here 1 by V, instead of 1 by V square in this equation, in these two equations we have epsilon 0 uh, mu 0. So V is 1 by square root of epsilon 0 mu 0. So if you substitute the values of these constants, 
mu zero is given by four pi times ten raised to minus seven, and epsilon zero is eight point eight five into ten raised to minus twelve. So if you work out this, if you work out these constants using these constants, you can see its value is two point nine nine seven nine into ten raised to minus eight meter per second. So that is V equal to nearly 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second or this is equal to C, the velocity of light or speed of light. Speed of light. So this implies electric Maxwell's equations shows that electric and magnetic fields can propagate uh, as well or electromagnetic wave with a propagation velocity V is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 or equal to C or it is the same as the speed of light. So Maxwell can or one can conclude that uh, light is an electromagnetic wave. We know the velocity of light or speed of light is C. Huh? So uh, these two equations 5 and 6 can shows that uh, electromagnetic wave propagate with the speed of light. So already we know the speed of light is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. So one can easily conclude that light is an electromagnetic wave. Light is electromagnetic. Light can be electromagnetic wave. Light can be electromagnetic wave. So actually Maxwell, Maxwell predicted the existence of electromagnetic wave in 1865. And after nearly 20 years, in 1888, Hertz experimentally, experimentally proved this existence of electromagnetic wave. Okay. So now we already know, uh, we have, during our school days, we already studied that uh, light is an electromagnetic wave. So this is nothing, a new thing to us. But uh, think about the, uh, time of Maxwell. So what is important is that uh, the, the speed of electromagnetic velocity, the speed of electric and magnetic fields are given by V is equal to 1 by mu zero epsilon zero. So what are these constants? Mu zero and epsilon zero. So remember uh, the first time we introduced the, uh, this constant epsilon zero. Hmm? So that, that is, uh, the, we first seen this uh, constant epsilon zero when we introduced Coulomb's law. So Coulomb's law lays the force between two charges. That is, the force between two charges is uh, proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance. So that proportionality constant is what? 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0, 4 pi epsilon 0. That is where we first, uh, we first introduced this epsilon 0 constant. So this epsilon 0, this constant of proportionality came from an experiment. The, in the experiments of the force between charges. That can be experimentally determined. So that is actually experimentally de determined. That proportionality constant 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 or experiment, epsilon 0 is an experimentally determined constant from the experiments of, uh, from the experiments involving charges. So in the same way, mu 0. Mu 0 first we encountered when we introduced Piot savart law. So it is the uh, magnetic field produced uh, by a current carrying conductor. So again, mu zero is a constant that appeared in an experiment that involves uh, the current and magnetic field, or the magnetic field produced by the current, or the force between uh, current carrying conductors, etc. So that is also an experimentally determined constant. So this product happened to be one by square root of mu product of these two constants happened to be the velocity of light. So this is the second greatest unification in physics. So that is the contribution of Maxwell, or that is the contribution of Maxwell's term, second greatest unification. So he, he, Maxwell unified electromagnetic theory and light. So from these calculations, we already seen that uh, electromagnetic wave can travel with the speed of light, or light can be an electromagnetic wave. So he, he, uh, after he, after him, the greatest unification in physics came that 
electromagnetic theory and light can be described using electromagnetic wave. Up to that, optics uh, are in a different field. Optics was in a different field. Electricity experiments are there. Magnetism experiments are there. After the after he introducing this term and uh, after the introduction of uh, wave uh, this uh, waveform of electric and magnetic fields, uh, this greatest happen the greatest unification in physics happened that light is an electromagnetic theory or light or optics can be entire optics can be described using uh, Maxwell's equation or uh, using electromagnetic theory. So that is the beauty of Maxwell's equation or that is the uh, contribution from Maxwell's equation uh, in the electromagnetic theory.